It is a hit selector on 88.2 Sanyo FM. And on Celeb Select, I am chatting with Daniel Omara. Happy to be here. Oh, happy with to Crystal. have you. Happy mm. to have you. So, tell me, mm-hmm. um, just break it down for us, because we want to know yes. where you grew up, which schools you went to, so we have an idea how you became the man you are now. We literally grew up in a house under construction. Okay. From 97 to about 2005, but it was fun. You know fun. many of us did that, eh? Yay! I wasn't mm-hmm. the only one. Yes. And yeah, I was feeling secretive about yeah, this. Like, ah, there are walls. It's mm-hmm. roofed. It's roofed. Okay, windows, we can figure it out yeah. later. Ah. Buy blankets. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> In case such <laughs> stuff. But Namuongo, I think, is where the I, I began to really explore my personality because, the, okay, there's this place called Soweto in mm-hmm. Namuongo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you've heard of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's one of those places where they have like storied pit latrines. It's, it's a new level of slum. <laughs> it's, it's special. There's slum, then there's Soweto. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is so unique. And you know, the thing about Namuongo, there's a railway line between Namuongo and Soweto. Mm-hmm. So the thin line between poverty and wealth is literally... <laughs> it's right there. A railway line, yes. Uh-huh. Like you cross to the other side and you almost feel taller. People there are always high. <laughs> but <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And living in between Muyenga and Soweto just taught me a lot about life. I just began to explore, ask questions. And at the time, I was in Green Hill Academy for my P7. Mm -hmm. So there's this mix of kids and all that. It's the first time I saw someone wear braces. Oh, you've you never seen... Well, you know, they're not that... O- yeah, I know, not in Uganda. I mean, mm-hmm. many people have misaligned teeth, but who cares? But it's also expensive, so yeah. yeah. Exactly, and painful. Expensive. Yeah, yes. so imagine coming from Shimoni, demolished school, to Green Hill Academy. The contrast was appalling. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the 300,000 shilling difference in school fees, because Shimoni was 20,000. Really? 20,450, and they would chase you for that 50. Mm. The struggle was real. Yeah. Yeah, so I moved on to Busoga College, Mwiri fought too much, they moved me back to Green Hill Academy, mm-hmm. and then I went to Katikamu SDA. And so you said you fought too much? Yes. What kind of child were you? Uh, very humble, uh, but also very stubborn. How can you be humble and stubborn? Please choose. Well, if you made sense to me, I would go along with you all the way. Mm-hmm. The moment you challenged me, we would fight. Did this apply to teachers too? Everyone. Administration? Okay, mostly students, but <laughs> okay, so my uncle, my uncle was the director of studies, oh. so people wanted vengeance. He was called Mr. Omara. He had this accent. Emmanuel, where's my chivoko? <laughs> so every time people saw me, and I had the exact same name. Mm-hmm. So for every punishment he gave, people felt like, oh yeah, let's go beat the kid. Okay. And I had to fight back. Mm. And seven fights in one year was too many for my mom to handle because okay. I joined senior one at twelve, mm-hmm. as as tiny. Yeah. I, I, I was so small, I could literally reach up and touch the floor. <laughs> it, <laughs> I was that short. Like, <laughs> I was a midget. But I, I went back to day school, then mm. moved on to SDA, boarding school, then sent my... I, I went to five schools in total. Wow. No expulsion. Okay. No single expulsion. I was just a, a nomadic academician. Mm. Let's call it that. All right. Yes, Christo, you have to create titles for the things you, know, you do. I'm giving him a serious side eye right now, but okay. Yeah, you, you can give me the side eye all you want, but I'm going to keep adding titles to my things. Like, I am not a comedian. I'm a humor specialist. A humor specialist? Humor How specialist. I like the sound of that. Yeah, it sounds nice. Hmm. Just like people are not undertakers. They're afterlife consultants <laughs> or afterlife transit agents. <laughs> You're not a digger. <laughs> You're a soil relocation agent. You get you, hey. you move soil from one place. Even okay. side dishes want okay, to have their props. What about me? What about me? What am I? Should I give you time for that? Mm? Vocal therapist. A vocal mm. <laughs> you, you talk to us and we feel good. Hmm. You should hear the one for side dish though. Uh, no. Uh, mm-hmm. Second priority partners. Second priority yes. partner. You've you really put a lot good. of time into this, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? At, <laughs> yes, actually, I have. Now that I think about it, I have problems. <laughs> now, but you yeah. went to five schools, mm-hmm. and then when you were done, where, where were you done for A-levels? Uh, St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence. St. Laurent, Paris Palais. Oui, oui. I've never heard it said quite like that. Mm, yeah, that's how it's supposed to be said. Mm, Saint Laurent. Saint Laurent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to speak it like you have a really bad cold, but with a sexy voice. Mm-hmm. Saint Laurent. Mm-hmm. So the after, after A-level, where did you go? I went to Uganda Commercial University. Why are you looking down in UCU? Uh, what? <laughs> Why are you 
looking down when you say that? No, I was playing with my hands. You know, I, I get shy around cute women. Crystal, give me some, cut me some slack now. Eh? <laughs> okay, you know sorry. your problems. Then, okay. Yeah. Mm. So I went to UCU. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I went to UCU and uh, pursued a degree in a Bachelor of Arts in Education. Mm hmm. Literature and English. Okay. Yeah, mm. and uh, that brings you to the man you see today. Okay. Mm. Daniel Omara. So tell nutshell. me something. Were you always funny? Because you were. <coughs> you mm. said you were humble but stubborn. I've always but been. Were you always the funny guy? Like even in your family, were you the one at like dinner time, oh. or you would be telling all the stories? <laughs> oh no, my 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 family is full of. It. I'm I'm the one on stage, mm -hmm. but my family has the mat. They should be the ones doing my job. <laughs> really? I'm just a representative. <laughs> trust me, <laughs> those guys are. Cra my mom and dad go into roast battles between themselves in front of the kids. Wow! Like they just throw stuff at each other. <laughs> Puns especially. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it, it, it's hilarious. Cause that, and they're very born again. Okay. Very strict but born again very Christian. But they're very passionate, let's say. Yes, mm -hmm. very passionate and extremely hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like the first joke my dad told me was um, a drunk man is walking down the street with his son. Mm -hmm. I know, the perfect setup, right? Yes. So a drunk man is walking down the street with his son and his son turns and looks at his father and says, Daddy, how do you know if someone is drunk? Mm -hmm. And the son says, hmm... Okay, the father looks at them and says, you see those two men in front of us? Okay. Mm -hmm. the kid is like, yes. <laughs> if I was drunk, I would be seeing four of them. Mm. When the kid looked in front, it's only one there person. Only one <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> this one, is, I kind of ruined the setup. But that was pretty much the joke. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just picked up from him. I was like, oh, dude, got jokes. Okay. I have to compete. So, well, this started like way back. So, let me just ask mm. you for your first request right now. You asked for uh, a Navio song. Yes, mm -hmm. no holding back. Why this one? Oh, memories, memories. Hey, no, the hey, story is hey, simple. Hey, okay, you, you want the full story? Yes. Uh, it was at a time when I was going through a breakup. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was in a really weakened position, mm -hmm. like um, emotionally vulnerable and all that. And I, I just said it, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do what needs to be done, either to resolve it or to end it. Mm -hmm. And I just made one last move <laughs> and said, can we work this out? And the Tried answer was to save. a no. And I just backed out, basically. Okay. And that song was playing coincidentally when that happened. And I'm like, this is such a good song to waste on such a depressing <laughs> event. I was mad. But I loved the song and Navio is oh. my boy. So Okay, yeah. so here it is. <laughs> yeah. No holding back, Navio. <laughs> Cracking me up seriously is Danny <laughs> Omar on Celeb Select. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Love so the name of this thing. Hmm. Celeb Select. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I need training. Teach me your ways, Krista. <laughs> 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 now you mentioned that your family you just you guys go at each other all the time all the time so did you ever do like comedy in school or in this came this started later in life well in in school it was mostly theater mm -hmm. um acted in a few plays i actually used to run away from it okay like i, I am i'm a very reserved person I love my privacy, mm -hmm. which is ironic <laughs> for a guy in entertainment. Mm -hmm. But I genuinely love my privacy. Mm -hmm. So every time they were telling me, you need to get on stage and be in this play, I'd be like, nah, I, I, I don't want to be that guy. Mm. But every time I did get like, ooh, ooh you waste it. And I'm thinking, eh, you're just saying that because I'm cute. So <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that through my high school mm -hmm. till I became information prefect in senior five. And it was mandatory that you had to MC every school event in your campus. So were you able to get out of other things because you had MC? Ah, uh, no, not you really. Did all, you did everything? Everything, updating the notice board, writing the school paper, putting the writers club together, everything, mm -hmm. chasing after students who didn't want to attend prep, making people kneel. No, like wait. that girl who rejected you and stuff. <laughs> and I, I just went through <laughs> all of it. And uh -huh. The first time I actually did a stand-up set was on assembly. The whole most of the school hadn't arrived yet, mm. and these guys asked me, "Yo, just just get up and talk to people." And I didn't have anything rehearsed, and I just got up and spoke. I don't even remember what I said, mm -hmm. but I just talked, and people were laughing, and the principal was amused, and 
that mm-hmm. was that. And that was the, the seed. Right that was there. the seed, yes. Inception. Okay. Yeah. You know, I've always felt that comedy is like one of the hardest things in the world. I feel like you're standing mm. there naked <laughs> and people either have to laugh or not laugh. I mean, did you feel that it was a lot of pressure when you decided to really go for it or oh. it was easy for you? Wait. Uh, well, the thing about comedy is you have to be either really brave or really stupid. <laughs> to, to jump into it <laughs> and stand in mm. front of a massive crowd and believe I am going to make at least three quarters of these people laugh mm. because you can't amuse everyone. Yes, there that's are people true. Because people have a different sense of humor. Yes, exactly. And some people are just not in your things generally. But uh, They're th- not th- the idea is it, when you're not trying to be funny is when you are actually funniest. Okay. Yeah, because like, I always tell people I don't do jokes. Mm-hmm. I get on stage and talk about experiences. Mm. Like my baby sister recently gave birth Mm -hmm. and the happiest part for me is I don't have to see the gynecologist again. Sorry, that came out wrong. I I don't have to take her to see the gynecologist. (gasps) Yeah, the thing is, I don't trust gynecologists. Why? not? I mean, what was their inspiration for this choice of career path? Like, think about it. There was a gap that needed to be filled, you know? (laughs) No pun intended, but yeah, I mean, like, at at (laughs) what point in your life do you walk up to your parents and say, Mom, Dad, I want to be a gynecologist? Well, maybe there's good money there as well. There is good money there. Because women are constantly having babies and and things are happening. That's all I was saying. Uh, And I'm not downplaying their role in society. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, like, where you're being born and then you are thinking, I'll be back. Like, what, 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 what was it? And so <laughs> that's the thing. I, I, I don't do jokes. I just talk about the things that really baffle me. I mm-hmm. pretty much ask questions and people laugh <laughs> at mm-hmm. the questions or sometimes try to answer them. And then I have my counter responses. And that's basically it's social criticism. So that's how it works. That's how it works for me. Okay. Different comedians have different ways of doing it. Now, you mentioned um, your sister. Yes. Is she older or younger? Younger. She's younger. Way younger. Okay. <laughs> and you mentioned the gynecologist. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hmm, I'll just leave that. Someone told me, someone hmm. asked me to ask you if you had a baby recently. Ooh, that's the baby my sister had. Okay. Well, it's not with me. Let's just put that <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the kid. It's her kid. Uh, okay. The baby's name is Kisha. Mm-hmm. Not Kisha, Kisha. 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 In our language, it means mercy. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. I named her. <laughs> Ah, 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 let me brag. He's Christ. having his moment. Yes, amazing I'll, I'll just uncle. Wait, I'll wait it out. Epic, bam, <laughs> drops my kicks it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we named her Keisha, and she's 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 an incredibly quiet baby. She's mm. just peaceful. Oh, and I loved the kid from day one because I showed up the the day after the baby was born and just took a picture mm. and made it my profile photo. Uh huh. And oh. I think that's where the problems began because um, my ex-girlfriend picked it up and made it her profile photo uh-huh. and people began to ask people questions like, eh, eh? Eh, eh, when eh. were you going to tell us about this was the app eh, eh. this hidden love child this, this this hidden love child you two got back together made a baby and then went separate ways mm. uh, what is happening and the reason they thought it, it was my ex and i is because the kid is light-skinned mm, okay. and it couldn't have been me alone <laughs> so, <laughs> so um you mentioned a breakup are you dating now my heart is with someone. Your heart is with my someone. My heart is with someone. What does that mean? Um, she knows how I feel. Okay. I think I know how she feels. I th- I say I think because woo, women. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, yeah, yeah. The part I hate the most about it is not being able to say what you planned to say. Mm-hmm. Like, I was going to walk up to her and be like, "Hey, here's the thing. Take my hand. Mm-hmm. I'm going on a journey." Mm-hmm. to where I don't know but it's a beautiful place mm-hmm. and if you come with me and we feel the same way we'll know when we get there Okay. so you come in with me or nah that's what I had rehearsed I get there and I'm like <laughs> 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 what's up <laughs> how is your father <laughs> like, I couldn't get anything out and I hate, <laughs> I hate that feeling it's mm-hmm. so annoying to not be able to say what you feel but oh, what you you're really romantic. Hmm? I tr- oh, thank you. I try. You try. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 it makes you feel so vulnerable. So that's the position I'm in right now. So you, you know hmm? how you, ca- you, you have feelings for each other, but you're not together. Is that what you're saying? We are not. I don't know. Eh. It's, it's, it's complicated. Mm-hmm. But all I can say is she's amazing. I call her my earthbound goddess. Mm. Mm. Okay. I, I don't know if I'm being I honest. I she's listening right now. Well, I don't think so. But if she is... 
<laughs> okay, I'll let you have your moment. Hopefully, you're listening in because that, that might have gone somewhere else. But hey, um, I'll ask you for your next song right now, your next mm-hmm. request, a DJ Khaled song. Yes. Mm-hmm. I am not a DJ Khaled person at all. Okay. This we the best business. You smart, you loyal. <laughs> He's a bit too slow for me. <laughs> But when it comes to producing, mm-hmm. hey, I give him his respect. And then he teams up with one of my favorite all-time rappers, mm-hmm. Nas, yes. whom I've been following since I was a kid. Go, all those albums, I'm just Nas' so biggest fan. So you are a fan. diehard Nas fan. Yes, and I was waiting for him to put out something ever since he appeared in that video with Nicki Minaj mm-hmm. as a video fox. <laughs> I don't know what we call male video mm-hmm. vixens. It was that works, that works. Yeah, so I he was it's there. Fair. Fair. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, Nas can't be doing foxy in other people's videos. Like, it's support. Our money. Yeah. I wanted him to come out with something. And then I heard that song, mm-hmm. Major Key. And I was like, okay, my boy is back in the industry. I have to represent this okay. by all means. Mm-hmm. All right, so here it is DJ Khaled and Nas. Nas album done. Yeah, man. Iconic. Iconic. My signature fade with a bevel blade. That's a major key. I told her she's smart and loyal. I like that. That's a major key. Start a label. You, how many accounts do you have? Uh, Piquiuli is the Facebook account. Mm-hmm. Lol Modo is the Instagram account. <laughs> then, um... I think it's the same on Twitter. I, I'm not <laughs> sure. I don't check so often, but <laughs> generally, I'm worried about social media. You people suck. Thank you for uh, making that clear. So, it's, was it a decision or you just feel like it's too much work for you? Sometimes it is too much work. Mm. I don't put my private life on social media. Like, sometimes when sometimes I actually don't post because I'm holding myself back from saying what I want to say. I was saying too much. Yeah, I was saying too much. Like the days when I just want to rant. Like mm-hmm. that fair way roundabout or whatever it is. Like, Thank you. It's so confusing. Do you know that if you're mm. coming down from fair way, uh-huh. you can only go left. Are you serious? Down. Yes. All the way, like, like all the way to Mulago. You can't turn right at all. You go down left and you pretty much loop you back. You switch from the other side, then loop back up. Uh, it's, it's like playing snakes and ladders on the road. Mm. It, uh, very soon they're going to tell us, shake a dice before you drive. <laughs> so that we know, <laughs> see how far you're going. It's horrible. So uh, sometimes I have to stop myself, especially emotionally. Okay. Like when I'm going through some stuff. And I'm just about to get on Facebook. I, I switch off my bundle throw the phone somewhere or leave Mm. it charging in the other room go play video games just to keep my mind off it Mm. (laughs) because people don't actually want to know what your problems are or if they do it's not like they're providing solutions that's the thing i I think people do want to know what your problems are because generally as human beings we're Mm -hmm. always going to be peeping toms i mean that's why reality tv is what it is now (laughs) but the point is i mean is it the right place sometimes yeah people are different some people actually feel better for sharing on social media true i'm and not people... one of those people I me mean, i'd rather eat ice cream <laughs> when i have issues i go eat ice cream Ooh, like ice cream and chocolate ice, yes thank you it solves everything i just realized it recently it may mess up with my face but i'll die happy mm. but yeah <laughs> just be there i'm not i'm not i may not be the best looking but hey i ate so <laughs> you did a lot of theater in school. And then, of course, yeah. a lot of us saw you on the hostel. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. How many <laughs> years were you with the hostel? Three, actually. Three from years. 2010 up to 2012. Okay. Mm. And then you left abruptly and there were many, many stories about your leaving. Yeah. And yeah. Blah, blah. Me, me, me. This was a couple of years ago. Yeah. But why did you really leave? We had a, should I call it a? Well, I would call it a contractual disagreement if we had contracts at the time. Mm -hmm. We held a major meeting in season two, and the biggest quarrel was pay, a pay rise. Mm -hmm. And they said they would address it in season three. Okay. And uh, like 20 something episodes into season three, there was no talk of a contract, there was no talk of a pay rise. We hadn't even signed contracts. We were doing this out of passion. So when we co- when I confronted the management, I first of all started sorry, by making it clear. All the way into season three, and you didn't have contracts. No, just for season three. Okay. The other two three. seasons we had contracts. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when I confronted the management about the issue, because uh, t- um, I, I, I told them two weeks from now if I don't see a contract, I am just going to, you know, stop coming <laughs> to mm-hmm. work because I don't have any contractual obligation. And indeed, two weeks later there was nothing. So I informed my fellow actors. I said, "This is my thing. It's what I am doing. Don't." 
follow me because I have a backup plan. I have stand-up comedy and I think I own part of Mijingo Island. So You, you think? I have shares <laughs> in stuff, yeah. I don't know whether the girl who sold it to me was genuine mm -hmm. or if it's even fertile. <laughs> I just wanted to grow some productive stuff, you mm. know, smokable plants. So <laughs> what happens is <laughs> I, I tell these guys and it was a Friday. And Monday, I just stopped going to work. So I get all these phone calls. What's wrong with you? Why aren't you here? And I'm like, hey guys, ranting isn't going to help. I want to talk to the management about this issue. Okay. So I go there and the argument is, go back to work, then we can talk. I'm like, no, we talk, then I go back to work. Uh -huh. It was a standoff. It was a standoff, basically. Mm -hmm. And the conclusion was, okay, if you're rebelling, then see ya. Okay. I'm like, cool. <laughs> well, okay. And when you when you look back now, do you feel that it was the right time to leave? Was yeah, the it end was. of a chapter? It was the end of a chapter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have loved to see the the, the show thrive and all that because I really, really, really loved that show. Mm -hmm. I was so deep into the character; it took me two years to snap out. Okay. Two whole years after leaving the production. So sometimes I'd be in the middle of a conversation, especially when there are cameras involved, mm -hmm. and you're talking to people normally, like, yeah, yeah. So the other day I was just, and the guys are like, action, cut. You know what I'm saying is, you have to, <laughs> like, and would just flip on me. Even I wasn't ready. Like, I didn't know <laughs> it, it had gotten that bad. Okay, so, so when you left the hostel, um, mm. what, what did you do, I guess? Uh, the, a the, couple of things. A, no, not even a couple of things. I just, I went home and decided to focus on my stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. Though at the same time, Crackers collapsed. That's the time Crackers broke up. Yes. So everything I had worked for the past four years was gone in a month. Okay. Just out of the blue like that. So th there was a few moments of depression. Was that a tough time for you? It was a tough time because I didn't know what to do with myself. Because mm. you've gone from being so busy all the time, right? Yeah, to having nothing to do. I mean, you're leaving home at 4 a.m. to go film. You're coming back at 8 in the evening. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly you have all this time on your hands and a PS2. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't feel sorry for you anymore. <laughs> yeah. That, that was then. So mm -hmm. I, I, I tried to find ways to cope and I just decided to take my time and first give the industry a break. Okay. I got off stand up, I got off acting and just fell back to doing weekend gigs, mm -hmm. MCing events, basic stuff until I got on T V around um May twenty thirteen. Mm -hmm. So imagine from around October twenty twelve to May 2013, I was just off the grid. I did not want to be seen. I didn't want to know. I just wanted to be left alone. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've ever been as passionate about anything as I was about the hostel. Okay. Yeah. All it right. Sort of messed with me a bit, but yeah, you know. Well, you know, the next project will come eventually. Oh, lots of projects have come, mm -hmm. and I've loved each and, each and every one of them. The one that you'll be that invested in, probably it, your own project. I took that one personal. Mm -hmm. Like, I would stop the director and be like, I did not feel that take. We are doing it again. <laughs> Nowadays, the director is like, good take. I'm like, okay, I need to go to the bathroom. But <laughs> it's not to say that I've deteriorated in my acting or anything. It's just, uh, it was a bit of a passion killer for me. So I've gone through recovery. Mm -hmm. Now I'm planning on stepping back on the scene officially. Okay. Mm, so conquest. I guess a lot of people wondering, okay, right now, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing with your time right now? Where are you right now? Well, I'm in the background of lots of uh, on-screen productions. Mm -hmm. I can't name them because they're coming out next year and they're very confidential. Ah. Okay, but, just, uh, just give us a little juice, a little something. Okay. There's a... There's a sitcom coming, mm -hmm. but I'm on the creative team. Okay. I am mm -hmm. not there. Okay. And I, I, can't, I can't spoil it for people yet. I want it to be a surprise for them as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And right now we're on another movie project that also comes out next year. Then mm -hmm. I'm writing my own film called The Villain. Ooh. <coughs> oh, yeah. It's okay. going to be crazy. Then uh, we're also running comedy files and training new comedians, young talent. Are you finding lots of young talent? There's lots of them. Uh-huh. With the wrong ambition. <laughs> To, to be famous. The, yes, to be famous. And to and, make the money. And to make money. And those are people who will do anything to... The, they'll steal your joke, which you just told them right before they got on stage that you're coming on after them. No, 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 no. That's what makes some people dangerous in this industry. People who are out for the fame, I don't deal with those because I know they'll do anything to stay famous. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. They'll screw crazy. you over. Yeah, but there's lots of genuine good young talent that mm -hmm. has popped up since we started Comedy Files in 2014. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's working out quite well, actually. Okay. It's lots of fun. All right. I'm traveling. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the world? I've seen the world. I've seen everything. My favorite spot is Rwanda, though. <laughs> 
um should we ask why no they have this really amazing airport mm, mm. it's just the airport yeah and everything is within five minute proximity in kigali Nothing to do with the, the female species. Mm? What? No, my heart is taken. Oh, oh Christo, how I'm dare scared. you? I'm just scared. Oh, I'm sorry. Sc- so scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask you for your next request right now. <laughs> right now. Everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. This song caught me unaware. Okay. It came out, what, last year? It was released last year, and I saw the artwork on social media, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at Play One, The Myth, and Sony, and I'm like, oh, Myth is in it. I, knew, I, I know Myth for being an amazing lyricist. Yes, he is. I've heard Sony sing. Mm-hmm. Beautiful voice, but she's underground. And then I look closely at Play One, and I realize, I knew this guy from S1 in Busoga College, Mwiri. He was <laughs> there when I was fighting people. <laughs> he nicknamed me Sano Daniel, <laughs> based on uh, Sanosuke from Samurai X. A very violent character. He loved to fight, yeah. Okay. I just saw the look. You don't know this. Anyway, yeah, anime. <laughs> I'm a big anime <laughs> oh, fan. Oh, okay. Yes, and so is Play One, and he's a personal friend. Mm-hmm. And this is like my party song for 2017. So it all came together for it, you. It, it, it was just, there was just so many reasons to love the song. Plus, it's, it's a genuinely good song. Mm-hmm. So I'm all for it. And it shows my plans for next year. I'm taking everything. 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 Here it is. Everything. All of it. L L Y O one nigga. I never change. Still at it like a crack cat. I guess I'll be there. Don't bust stop second jeans. I don't need a stupid that low. But I'm in the terminator zone. Got the red eye. Let the never feel a bit of murder. Can I when I'm with the M I some my chick? You were mentioning you have some big projects that are coming out next year. Yes. Okay. Mm, How has 2016 been for you? Because we're in the home stretch. Woo! Oh my, this this has been the year of blunders. Blunders? Blunders! (laughs) I'm I'm not even going to lie, Mm because I've realized I have to admit that to myself. Okay. If I'm to move on from it, Mm. I have made so many mistakes. Mm. Like, (laughs) my entire life combine in one year worth of blunders <laughs> like it, it has been that intense mm-hmm. but it's also because i have been trying so many things okay i've been trying so many things i've, I've been trying to get back into the film industry trying to mobilize guys trying to put stuff together and that comes with a certain amount of failure mm. especially if you're used to being called to do people's projects uh-huh. and now you're trying to start your own mm-hmm. so uh, there's going so to be a now bit it's, it's all resting on you it's all resting on you and then i'm i'm really i can fight but then there are moments when you're like ah, blah, blah, blah. and so you just you, let you, go yeah it's like that moment when you can't when you're looking for something and let's say you can't find your keys mm-hmm. and then just when you're about to tell people i can't find my keys you find them so there's no point completing the sentence <laughs> it's like i can't find them. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's kind of what it felt like and it just i i have so Whoa. are there some things you learned this year? Like, okay, this won't work. This is not for me. That's yes. for me. I have learned a lot. Uh-huh. I, I, I don't even know how to put it <laughs> in, in words. Mm. Like, there's just so much information I have gathered this year. But I would just like to take this opportunity to apologize to the people I've let down this year. Because <laughs> I know there's a crap load of you. And I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I will call you personally and apologize. But this one is on radio. Just okay. I so hope it's, it's you're like listening. A blanket one, just to cover in case you yeah, fall in that bracket. Just to cover. I really feel. Yeah, the, the, the screw ups have been massive. Okay. But at the end of the day, it's all for a greater cause. There are bigger things coming. Mm-hmm. And I feel like yes, now I finally know what I need to do to get things done right. That's why I'm so sure about 2017. Okay. So mm. what have you learned about yourself through all these many blunders? I am not that That you patient. did not know before. That you're not that patient? I am not that patient anymore. Okay. Okay. All my life, people have told me, Danny, you don't change. Mm. From like the time I was a kid, I've been this cute my entire life. <laughs> and <laughs> people have been telling me, you don't change. Like we meet you, you're still the same funny guy from childhood until I just began to realize, especially by trying to be in a relationship with someone, mm. I am not that patient. Okay. Secondly, I realized I have quite the temper sometimes, mm. especially when I feel challenged at a logical level. Like uh-huh. when something makes sense to me or makes sense to you, but it's, you're, it's not making sense to me and I begin to feel like you're lying to me. I get very agitated because I feel like, oh, no, 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 no. My brain's bigger than that. Mm. And it's one of the things I figured out. I'm like, I am going to have to deal with this anger where mm. it's coming from and all that. Okay. And stuff. And then I also figured out that I was giving up on lots of things too easily. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like most times I'll just be there like for play takes too long. Yeah. And th- it, it was <laughs> it, it was a process of learning for me mm. and I've it has made me a lot stronger. 
Okay. I'm now focusing on being a better person, a better version of myself. Okay. And that is why I thank my earthbound goddess because it's fighting with her that got me to understand these aspects about myself. <laughs> Nange, we fought. Mm. We fought. But you know, but I, I, I have my know, own story. So th- yes. Yeah, I'm glad we are still friends though. We should have killed each other at some point. <laughs> but yeah, th- 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 I don't know. You know, I always progress. say, I always mm. say that when people are getting together, the dating process is so important. Not yes. three months, not six months, uh-huh. even a couple of years because you mm-hmm. go through all that. You go through the lovey-dovey. Then you go through the fights. Yes. And then you understand what you can actually get through. Yes, like finally you figure out choking how it won't work. And <laughs> <laughs> he is joking. I'm joking. He's joking. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice punchline though. <laughs> choking is joking. But <laughs> generally, <laughs> it's a process. It, uh, mm. This year for me, because in, in 2013 when I left everything i just chose to shut myself out mm. now re-entering the industry and rediscovering myself has been a process for me like even i didn't know i had some of these problems okay. with myself and I'm, I'm i'm trying to figure it out i'm learning and i feel like i'm going to be a lot more ready for what life is throwing my way okay well mm. self-actualization is a very important part oh, yeah, very of our journey right true. very okay. important okay. well lots of people are on their journeys any uh, any inspiration for them what's your philosophy in life what would you advise yeah uh, well my philosophy is quite simple today's the tomorrow that should have been yesterday why are you confusing us what's wrong with you okay anytime is a good time today, to yes? y- anytime is a good time to start i mean why not now mm, today okay. is the tomorrow that oh. should have been yesterday so mm-hmm. if you didn't get it done yesterday start now okay if so it's you, never too late it's it's never too late dive in dive in <laughs> even for people who <laughs> are learning how to swim dive in <laughs> and just figure it out but generally just love what you do mm. love what you do. I, i'm seeing you smile the entire show and it's not because i'm making you laugh you want to be here <laughs> Well, well, you I genuinely want to be. Yes, do you do, and that, that's that's what makes it beautiful. That's what makes you so good at it. It's not like customer care people in most of the services we have. <laughs> I saw a tweet from Umeme recently. Uh-huh. <laughs> Someone tweeted, "Umeme, there's no power in Makere University." Uh-huh. As in, what's going on? <laughs> Umeme tweeted back, "Go home. You're not supposed to be there." <laughs> 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 and I'm thinking, okay. This social media wow. team really has no chills. <laughs> but that's most of Uganda. <laughs> Nobody wants to be where they are right now. Just mm. go be where you're happy. Love it and stay there. Okay. People are scared, but overcome the fear. Just go do you. <laughs> go for it. Go, go for, for it. it. Well, thank you so much for coming on Celeb Select. Oh, it's my pleasure being yes, here. Yes, you're right. I think my cheeks are hurting. I've left the <laughs> whole show. I ah, know. The, the cheekbones have been like that the whole time. <laughs> just never around it. I it's want to be there. like you when I grow up. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, just tell us about your last request. Mm, my last request. Um, okay, um, I'm from the north. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you, well, you know the situation for like the past 30 years in the north and all that. Yes. And I have this friend called Akelo Jackie mm-hmm. who was right in the middle of it. Okay. Had to hide in the bushes with her parents and stuff. There, there's a lot of running being done. Mm-hmm. And if you heard her story, you would actually break down. There, there's another song called Tam where she sings about the thoughts that keep going through her mind, that kept going through her mind every time she was at war. Okay. It's a lot deeper and a lot more depressing it would have killed the show <laughs> so i chose this one which also <laughs> it's basically the song is called mm-hmm. what it does that mean means thank you god thank i you thank god. you lord okay and she speaks from the perspective the first verse she speaks from the perspective of god mm-hmm. saying i hear your prayers and all that the whole song is in acholi mm-hmm. but it has this angelic kidjo feel this girl could go international with a very local language and that's she, why I love she her. She does have a very world music sound. Yes, a very beautiful sound, very beautiful voice, clear message. I just wish we had like subtitles for radio. Or you can play the song and I'll translate in it the is, background. Yes, yes. That's going to happen. And no. I'll share this later. That will ruin it. <laughs> no. Okay, I'll translate for you. <laughs> <laughs> so just give us the title again. Okay, from Jackie mm, Akello. Yes. Uh, thank you again for coming through. My pleasure. Please have me over more often. I need these weekend breaks. Mm-hmm. Mm. From your busy life. From, ah, this, this, eh, they are killing the me. The busy Christa. life that is not telling us about, but anyway. <laughs> apart from that, okay. Here you it will is. see. You will see. We'll see. You will 2017. See. 2017. Big plans. Good easy. Good easy. Jackie Akello, here it is. I win you,